Hey, this is Zen the Crypto Queen, and I'm here today to talk about Bitcoin and um, the misconceptions revolving around it and the valid concerns, and we're going to address both, okay? Uh, I just wanted to pop over here for a second because take a look at this chart. I mean, wow, it's been, it's been an interesting run, hasn't it? Um, anyway. It, you know what? It's on, it's on a bull run. I think it's just, you know, jumping around a little bit to shake people off. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Let's go back here so I can talk a bit. Okay, so some of the, especially for large financial institutions, um, these are the misconceptions. I think that all of it needs to be addressed. So we'll get into it. Uh, number one, it's too volatile, volatile to be store of value. Number two, it has kind of failed as a means of payment. Number three, it's bad for the environment, the mining. Let's, more on that later when we address these things. Four, can easily be replaced by a competitor. Now, that's, uh, that's a misconception, but it's also a fairly valid concern. Okay, and I think I have it listed under valid concerns also. Hold on a sec. Let's go to number five. It's not backed by anything. This one actually makes me laugh because when I was researching this, it's like, um, it's, it's laughable because it's actually a lot like USD, right? I mean, it hasn't been backed by anything for almost 50 years now, but you know, let's not talk about that. All right, let's move on to the valid concerns, which uh, one, no matter how long I looked at this sentence in my notes, and this is, I, I am going to work on my penmanship again because I could not decipher it. Uh, it was something about the code. However, I can't remember exactly what it said because I couldn't read it. So we're gonna skip number one. Number two, uh, regs will sh slow adap adaptation. Yeah, we're gonna get into that in a minute about regulations and especially in the US. Number three, people will lose interest. Well, I think that's an interesting concern, but since it's been around since 2009 and it's still where it's at and gathering more interest, I would love to know what year that people will lose interest. So I'm gonna say not yet. And it's 2009 to 2024. So, you know, it's on a pretty good run. Uh, number four, and this one's interesting. I, as I was researching this, um, and um, I watch a bunch of different videos from other content makers. I do my own research, reading a bunch of articles and all that kind of stuff. So I would love to give credit to this because this one struck me. It's the unknown unknowns. And yeah, I mean, for most, for the most part, and I don't talk to people about crypto that much unless they ask me what I do, okay? And I do this, and I do one-on-one -on -one sessions with people. And if you're interested in that, email me at zendevin, that's Z-E-N-D-E-V-I-N, at gmail.com. Please put only the word crypto in uppercase letters in the subject line so I don't miss your email. Um, and, uh, you know, whatever else I do, I, I don't get into. I just kind of do this. So anyway, the unknown unknowns. Isn't that interesting? Because we don't know what the unknowns, unknowns might be. I mean, can anything be hacked? Probably. Can code be somehow backdoored and and uh, ruined on some level? Uh, it can happen. Look at what's look at what happened. What was the name of that thing? Uh, Gox, Mount Gox, I think it was. Um, you know, hacking code. Uh, there's all kinds of concerns, right? Um, and so for large investors institutions to be comfy with crypto, these things really all need to be addressed, the misconceptions and the valid concerns. So let's get into it. Um, volatility, it, it could fall, same as US dollars in the next 10 years. Uh, it's similar volatility. Um, you know, if you haven't noticed, your U.S. dollar isn't buying as much. It's taxed pretty hard, and uh, I think people are hurting over it. Um, but, you know, but it, it's definitely more volatile than gold. So let's say, you know, fair enough. Gold, you know, kind of holds its own. But recently, I think it went up to 
3K recently. So uh, volatile, but stable. Uh, volatil volatility, because people are still trying to figure it out. I mean, most of the time, like I mentioned, I don't talk crypto with people who are not interested in crypto. It's just, it's, it's, it's a no-win situation. There's no reason why I should sit around when they can go to my channel and look up what they need to know um, for me to explain everything right from the beginning, okay? It's very difficult unless people have shown an interest and done a little digging on their own, okay? Uh, but people are still trying to figure it out. And these are people that work in large financial institutions, and they're still trying to figure it out. Okay, decentralized, peer-to-peer, uh, -peer, you know, digital assets, all this stuff. It's all fairly new, even though it's been around since 2009, okay? Uh, it's volatile because the amount of Bitcoin is limited, right? We're coming up on another halving, uh, but... The total is 22 million. Once that's done and sold, then it's about trading because it's done. But we've got, I think it's almost four years in between halvings because it's a certain amount of blocks that they go by, but it's about four years. And we're coming up on one, uh, I think it's late this week or early next week, uh, the halving of Bitcoin. So, you know, do what you got to do. This is not financial advice. I only share what I do, but. Uh, if you have some Bitcoin, good for you. If you have not joined in on it, you know, I'm not saying you should write this second, but if you're thinking about it, do it before the halving. Um, okay, volatile because uh, there's only a small amount to trade at one given time. And, well, as an aside, store of value like gold and fiat currency can be volatile also. But, you know, if you want to see some volatility, take a look at the yen versus the USD chart over the past few years. Yeah, that'll show you volatility. Um, and I wanted to talk about this because Bitcoin can do seven transactions per second and they settle within several seconds. OK, now, on the other hand, Visa does 24,000 per second. And they're done, but they're not completed because as you probably have noticed, it takes time for the execution after the fact of an actual transaction. Okay. Uh, I'm just throwing out here other issues that, you know, kind of popped into my head and, and uh, I researched. Okay. So some other issues, uh, Bitcoin and taxation. Bitcoin is right now is taxed as property in the U.S. and some other countries as well. So that's as in cap gains, 15 to 20 percent. So all I can say is the infrastructure is still being developed. It's early stages of taxation with BTC, even though it's been around since 2009. Um, but remember, the SEC chose XRP, and we all know XRP is my fave, they chose XRP to set the regulation standards, and it's still going on, though there are strong rumors that a settling is coming up and out there for settling up on April 16th, which is this Tuesday. Now, is that going to be a fully settled deal and regulations completely in place? I don't think so, but I think it'll be another win for Ripple XRP, and I am looking forward to it. Um, with Bitcoin, uh, the bad for the environment bit. Well, mining uses a lot of electricity. Yeah, it does. Mostly from renewable sources. But yes, it does. A lot. Uh, here's the final question. I'm going to wrap it right after this. Is, is it worth it? Well, banking and all its uses uses more electricity. And P.S., so do running lots and lots of clothes dryers compared to Bitcoin mining. So you gotta be careful when people say, use, you know, what they say when they throw out things that are kind of broad or generalized. I always have questioned that with people when they do a broad brush stroke on any subject and just throw things out like, it uses a lot of electricity, or in this case, you know, for mining for uh, Bitcoin. Exactly how much and compared to what relatively speaking and for what value that you get out of it because a lot of things eat up a lot of electricity not just bitcoin mining and i'm not um i'm not backing up using a lot of energy that would be bad for the environment again they they have 
probably moved much more of it since 2009 over to renewable sources. But uh, nonetheless, there are lots of questions when it comes to broad, bros, broad brush stroke type uh, sentences that people throw out there at you. You know, and when people say things with authority, people tend to go, oh, okay, maybe he or she is right, right? So if I just stood up and said, mining, Bitcoin mining uses too much electricity. Okay, you might just buy that hook, line, and sinker without delving into it and finding out exactly how much and compared to what and what are the sources that they are using for it. So right there, I'm going to wrap it because enough said about electricity and about Bitcoin and the misconceptions and concerns. If you have a misconception or a concern or you have questions about the halving, that's going to happen um, late. What date is it happening? I'll have to look that up. But it's either later this week or early next week. I can't remember right. The second... Um, and um, if you have questions about the wrap with uh, SEC and XRP, hit me up in the comments. And again, if you want a one-on-one -on -one session, zendevin at gmail.com. Please put just the word crypto in all upper, uppercase letters in the subject line so I catch it. And I will chat with you on the next video. Thanks for being with me. Love you so much. Ciao for now.